and relative velocity. Relative velocity. So we'll, at least we'll get done the projectile motion and circular motion. And if we have time, we'll get into the relative velocities. This is the next part of chapter four. At the beginning section of chapter four, we dealt with two-dimensional uh, kinematics, general two-dimensional kinematics. Now we talk about projectile motion. Now projectile motion is a specific case of two-dimensional motion where something is traveling across a certain place and uh, it is under the influence of gravity alone. So projectile motion is two-dimensional motion under the influence of gravity. So that's the definition of projectile motion. So it's the two-dimensional version of free fall, which we did in chapter two, okay? Two-dimensional version of free fall. So we take the acceleration to be equal to negative uh, 9.8 j hat meters per second squared. So as the object is accelerating, it's only experiencing acceleration in the negative j direction. Or in terms of feet, it would be negative 32 feet per second squared. So the equations of motion for this object uh, would be different in the x direction and the y direction. So usually in projectile motion problems, if we come over here, the general projectile motion problem is something like this. Let me erase that. Something is thrown with a certain initial velocity at a certain initial angle. And then as that object is traveling, its path curves. And then it gets to its highest position. And then it starts falling. And maybe it falls below the height. Maybe it falls below the height that you threw it from. This one, uh, let me make this a little more symmetric here. This one should go like this. OK. So what we usually want to do for projectile motion is we want to break the initial velocity into its components, x component and y component, v initial x, v initial y. Okay, V initial x equals V initial cosine theta. V initial y is equal to V initial sine theta. So the sine of the angle is the y component of the velocity. The cosine is the x component. And what happens, uh, what happens in the x direction, the object experiences no acceleration. You see, as that, it says in that board, the acceleration is only in the j direction. So gravity is causing it to accelerate down. At each point along the path of the object, its acceleration is negative j, uh, negative g times j. So the, we expect the x component of the velocity to stay constant. So even, while, even when it's at the top of its path here, the x component of the velocity is equal to the initial x component. The x component of the velocity does not change. The y component of the velocity there is 0. Vy is 0. And then by the time the object comes to this point, what do we think, what should happen, you think? Just base it on symmetry here. 
by the time it comes to the same height from which you threw it, should it have the same velocity? Yeah. Remember, we're ignoring air friction, the effects of air friction. So if you ignore air friction, it should still have the same velocity, V final, should equal to V initial. And the V initial x, V final x should equal V initial x. So we know that the final velocity in the x direction never changes anyway. And then the initial, the final velocity in the y direction needs to equal what? The negative of the V initial y. That means it's going down. It has the same magnitude as the initial y component, but it's pointing down. And therefore, the angle is the same too. The angle is the same. Now, if you let it go more than that height, if you let it go like that, it should curve in more, right? If the thing goes more and more and more, by the time it gets here, what needs to happen? What's going to happen? Well, the x component of the velocity is not going to change. The x component of the velocity is never changing. However, the y component of the velocity is going to be pretty large. And together, these two is going to give you a velocity vector like that. And which is going to be tangential to the path that the object is making at that point. Right? So that, that angle here is equal to some theta. OK? <clears throat> now, the, the, the opposite. So over here, we can argue that this theta is greater than the, the angle at which you threw it at, right? So if we call this, let's say, theta prime, uh, we can argue theta prime, absolute value of theta prime, is greater than the absolute value of theta. This theta is the initial angle that you threw it at, right? So it kind of makes sense that it's going to curve in, and it's going to go down at a steeper angle. How about over here, somewhere at this height, let's say, which is going to be the same thing as this height. What's going to happen there? Well, you're going to have v initial x, v final y. This is going to be v final. Uh, we could put primes on this. Oh, let's, let's call this one v final, v final y prime, v final prime, theta uh, prime and then this one we can call double prime double prime theta double prime and the same thing is true about here so what can we say about that we can argue that the theta double prime is less than the angle that you threw it at right absolute value of theta double prime is less than theta the initial angle. So the angle gets less steep the angle gets less steep and the theta gets less steep right here. By the time it gets to here the velocity is only in the horizontal and then here the theta is uh, less steep and it's equal to the same theta as over there and then here it's the same theta as the initial theta. Okay. What else can we say? What, are, what other generalizations can we make about projectile motion? Let's come up with something. <clears throat> 